Hey y'all, so I wanted to start this series. I know I mentioned in a previous video, I'll put a link up there, that I started working here at the Blessed Stanley Rother Shrine. And this is gonna be the first part of a series that I'm doing for the Blessed Stanley Rother Shrine. Um, I want you to show off you know, where I work, what I'm doing, all the uh, points of interest that you can come and take a pilgrimage. And the first place we're gonna go of this video, if you saw the title, is Tepeyac Hill, which is on this side right here. It's on the west side of the property. And that's where we're heading right now. So while I'm walking, hopefully you can hear me okay. There's a little bit of a breeze. It's Oklahoma, so it's always windy here, hence my hair. The wind's coming out of the north, uh, or south, excuse me. Uh, I know my directions. So anyways, I'm trying to keep the uh, mic from blowing too loud. But anyways, I figured while we're walking, uh, I could tell you all a little bit more about the story of Our Lady of Guadalupe, San Juan Diego, why they're important in to the Catholic Church. So back in 1531, there was a, a recent convert Catholic. His name was Juan Diego. And Juan Diego uh, was, a, he was an Indian converted to Catholicism. And, you know, nothing super, super special about him, but he was a very faithful guy. And one day in December, he was walking along the path. He was going to church, going to mass, and Our Lady appeared to him. Now, during this time, December 9th was the, the date, and that was during the Spanish calendar when they would celebrate the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. And Our Lady appeared to him and said, go to your bishop and ask him to build a big, beautiful church for my son, Jesus. And he was a little bit taken aback, but he's like, okay. So he goes to the bishop, and he asks, and he talks to the bishop, and the bishop was very kind to him, but, you know, let's be honest, he was a little, you know, skeptical, a little hesitant before he's just going to say, oh, sure, no problem. So he just said, well, let me pray about it. So he left, and San Juan Diego kind of felt defeated. He felt like he let Our Lady down. Fast forward, uh, you know, the next day, Our Lady appears to him and says, you know, my son, you know, try again. So he tries again. Fast forward, I'm kind of skipping ahead a little bit of the story here, but our, uh, San Juan Diego goes back to the bishop and the bishop said, okay, go, if you see Our Lady, ask for a sign, some sort of sign, and if I, if I receive that sign, I will build a church. San Juan Diego uh, is, he's also in the middle of all this, he's trying to take care of his sick uncle. And he knows that he's failed Our Lady, he's got a sick uncle, he's got a lot on his plate basically, and he doesn't want to let anybody down. So what does he do? He actually tries to take a different path than he normally did on Tepeyac Hill, was the name of the hill that he would cross. And so he's like, I'm gonna go a different way because maybe she won't appear there. Well, sure enough, she did. And he says, she goes, my son, like, why are you afraid to talk to me? And he's just kind of breaks down. He's like, mom, like no one believes me. The bishop wants to have a sign and, and I got to take care of my uncle. He's sick. Our lady appeared to him again, like I said, and just smiled at him and said, son, don't you know that I'll take care of your uncle? He said, she said, just go over the hill over there and there you will find your sign that the bishop needs. So he goes over the hill. So imagine, you know, the hill. He goes over the hill, and there he finds a whole field of beautiful Castilian roses. And this was a miracle because, number one, those roses were not native to Mexico. Number two, they were not in season. They should have been in season, but they were all over the place in full bloom. And he was like, oh, yes, this is my sign. So he gathers them up and he puts them in his tilma. And his, the tilma is this uh, cloth that would drape over a man to cover like his, his regular clothes. It was kind of like a work apron, if you will. 
So he goes, gathers him up, put him in his tilma, rolls up his tilma, and heads over to the, to the bishop. Juan Diego, like I said, he runs to the bishop. He asks, he demands for a meeting with bishop. He gets a meeting with him. He throws down the roses, saying, here, bishop, here's your sign. And then everyone started kneeling down in worship and in, in just an adoration. And, and Juan Diego's like, what do you, I mean, that's amazing, but why are y'all in such awe right now? And there on his tilma was the image of Our Lady of Guadalupe. It's the only image of Our Lady of Guadalupe, let me show you again, there you go, that has appeared in the Americas. Now, if you're familiar with Our Lady of Lourdes, Our Lady of Fatima, those are their apparitions of Our Lady. This was the first one in the Americas. And then over here is the image of San Juan Diego. Now, a couple of things I want to point out, and again, I apologize, it's really windy up here, but one of the couple of big images I wanted to point out to you is right there but like below her hands is a black ribbon across her waist and that it, that ribbon indicates that she is pregnant and this is the first time the only apparition where our lady has appeared pregnant with a child and that's why in america she's the patroness of the unborn she is also the image for the pro-life movement because she speaks for all the all the mothers of the whole world but especially here in america the other big thing that I want to point out, like I said, there's a lot, but the, one of the other biggest ones is if you know your scriptures in the book of Revelation chapter 12, St. John spoke about a woman, Our Lady, who had the moon under her feet and the stars over her head. And if you look, Our Lady has the stars draped over her veil and then under her feet is the angel with the moon. And there's a whole bunch of other symbolisms and images. I'll leave a link down below that talks more about the image itself. Um, but just an incredible witness. And because of that, the bishop built the beautiful basilica that's there. The other miracle is that tilma that I talked about that has the image imprinted. It's, it's in the very fibers, the cactus fibers of that tilma. That that image, that tilma, is still in existence 500, almost 500 years later. And that's a miracle unto itself because it's just cactus fiber. It should have disintegrated many, many years ago. When you come to the Blessed Stanley Rother Shrine, this image of Our Lady Guadalupe and San Juan Diego are right up here in our Tepeyac Hill. It's 50 feet tall. And when you come up here, you're gonna get a good breeze because you're above you know, the ground. Uh, the other thing too is you get the beautiful images. You can pray the rosary. We've got some benches over here that you can sit and contemplate and pray. But also you get to look out. I'm looking over here at this beautiful, magnificent view of the shrine grounds that I can show y'all here. So right here is our great lawn. It's just an open field area. And then we have the Zocalo, which is a plaza area with our fountain that they're working on right now, and then the Shrine Church. And we'll, we'll go do a different video for that. And then this building right here is our Pilgrim Center where we have the museum and gift shop. And again, I'll show more of a different video for that as well. We'll be adding more as time goes on here on the Shrine, but uh, what an amazing start. A couple other quick things. The statue of Our Lady of Guadalupe is 12 feet tall. It's made of bronze and it was constructed in Mexico City. The same is for San Juan Diego here. It was also in bronze made in Mexico City and it's eight feet tall where he is kneeling and he's looking up to Our Lady right there. So I highly encourage you if you ever have a chance, especially if you want to take a pilgrimage on the feast of Our Lady Guadalupe on December 12th, we'll have a big festival here. We usually do uh, mañanitas at 5 a.m. to wake up Our Lady, some matachinas, we'll have mass here. So if you're ever in the Oklahoma City area on, in December, please try to make it down here because we'd love to have y'all. All right, well, I think that's gonna do it for this video, part one of the series for the Blessed Stanley Rother Shrine. I think the next one we'll do is in the Shrine Church itself. Can't wait to show you guys. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, all that good stuff. I'm, not, I'm trying not to get blown away here. And uh, until the next one, I'll see y'all later. God bless.